I have with me a special guest, uh, Eisner Award winning comic book artist, Jeff Darrow. Uh, I've been a big fan of, of your work for a number of years. I mean, these even made their way from New York to California, you know. Mm. They, they, they took a little bit of damage. You can see the sun burning here. It's good. But it makes them make them like real. Them. You know, I, I, I keep them I to like them. them. Yeah, not you know, stuck in a like you know, they put comics in plastic slabs. They call them They'd like plastic coffins, which I find ridiculous. But um, used to be parents say, "Oh, I don't want my kids reading comics," but they would read them and myself, and you'd see words, and if they didn't know them, we'd look them up in the dictionary. That's something we might not do with you know the reading assignments we got from school. So I know I improve what little vocabulary I have from reading comics. I go, oh, what does what does what does omnipotent mean? I go, I can I say omnipotent. I used to pronounce yeah. it. I didn't even know what you know astonishing meant or behemoth and all these words I use. And I looked them up, and that came from reading comics. And if any any time you can get a, a, a child to read, uh, you're you're winning the fight. I think. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, like uh, I comics. Yeah. Comics are now for kids again, right? There's like this huge yeah. boom yeah. of like young reader comics so we've yeah. kind of gone full circle once again not mine but, uh... <laughs> but okay well yeah i definitely am excited to talk about shaolin cowboy like like i've mentioned you know uh over at kung fu magazine as soon as um they came out via like burly man like first of all kung fu mm -hmm. magazine watched the development of the matrix very closely yeah. um mm -hmm. as you know we we interviewed uh fight choreographer yen wu peng we yes. watched the whole transition of Hong Kong cinema coming to the States. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, and so me being a comic fan, when, when I saw Burly Man comics spawned out of the, the matrix, we could yeah. say, you know. Well, I know that at that point, I think we were, they were contact, they contacted them, see if they wanted to take an ad out in the Kung Fu magazine for, for my comic, but they, it, it, it didn't happen. I was all for it. Do you practice martial arts? Have you ever practiced martial arts? I, I, I like Tai Chi and I'm not very good at it, but I, I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, oh. <laughs> I always thought it was at the, Tai Chi. I thought was when I, 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 I just thought it was at my age when I started, I thought I, I can probably do this without breaking anything. Cause when I was younger, I didn't care about breaking anything. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, if I break something, you know, I can't work. If I break, broke my wrist or something. So I was, but Tai Chi was very, it was good exercise. And, uh, but I think my daughter interested in she was taking Eagle Claw Kung Fu. Oh wow, that's 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 perfect. Um I I've had the good fortune of meeting the the grandmaster of Eagle Claw wow. Kung Fu, wow. Lily Lau. And you know, yes. she's amazing. I, yeah. yeah, it was it was interesting, but it was it was almost a little bit, it kind of reminded me because I've I've seen so many of these kung fu movies. I was like, wow, like some of this stuff really does happen. You know, you haven't done this the correct way and you have to apologize to the to the grandmaster and uh it was very interesting it's oh yeah some of that it's like it's it's sometimes it's interesting how like reality and yeah. lore yeah. kind of overlap yeah but, but yeah i mean i think the thought of your daughter doing eagle claw is just like that's like one of the classic you know yeah martial arts right there with like uh wing chung and Terms of like iconic. Yeah. I mean, although a lot of it is is mythology, right? Like there, there may or may not have been a nun that invented Wing Chun, but just the the iconic nature of you know. Yeah. Another thing is like Shaolin nuns. So, yeah. yeah, I I actually they had uh, they used to have this touring Shaolin monk um, well tour of, and they would come in and perform martial arts. And mm -hmm. uh, I live in I was living in Paris. And, uh, and this was the first time they actually let some of the nuns come with them. Oh, and wow. They, they, were, they, were, they were performing and it was beautiful. I mean, it was just amazing, you know, and they're doing all, it's just amazing. And at the end of it, the, the nuns, they had like, like, there were three of them, I think, and they each had a lotus and they just walked out in the crowd and they picked someone to give the lotus to. And the one just made a beeline and I was way in the back, made a beeline and gave it to my daughter. Oh, look at that. That's so brilliant. Beautiful. Wow, that's cool. San Francisco is just so saturated with various monks. Yeah, the, yeah there was there was a, a restaurant in downtown because I was I worked on the fourth Matrix film and mm -hmm. we were located in the downtown in the business district, right 
at the bottom of the hill near Chinatown. And there was the only restaurant that stayed up late was a, a, a Chinese takeout restaurant. Because after, you know, five o'clock, everybody's gone from the business district. Or right. And, um, and I would go down, they had great food. And I'd go in there quite often. The guy would talk to me and he asked what I was doing. He goes, oh, you know, my cook uh, does, does Kung Fu. And he came out and he's like, holy smoke. I still, I don't know. He's, I, I don't know that he gave me his real name, but I, I, I swear I'd seen him in some movies because he was really something. Uh, yeah. It's, was, it's like, so possible. I mean, once yeah. again, like San Francisco Chinatown is like a gold mine of epic masters. Oh, and they still have these little storefronts that yeah. you would love to draw. It's that classic, iconic. Yeah. You know, well, I've drawn a couple actually because I, I, you know, I walked through there and I take pictures. And uh, we're, while we're talking about reference, I want to know. How do you do it? I mean, the reference is essential. I yeah, I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I, I use uh, well, I have these action figures that I use. And then I just, you know, I've watched so many of those movies. I don't, I mean, I mean, it's all my, it's all to me, what I draw is all crazy baloney. Uh, I mean, I, tr I mean, some people come, they go, you know, do you, do you mean you're accurate? I go, it's about as accurate. My, as my knowledge of, of uh, astrophysics. I mean, I just make it up and, you know, for whatever I've seen from watching, watching films. And when I was, I, I watched, uh, you know, I'd watch some of the filming of uh, the fights in uh, the Matrix. And uh, I did a little, I did a little work with uh, Jet Li once and he showed me some stuff. And, oh, that's, that's you know, that excellent. guy, wow, is that guy fast. And I learned a lesson because I always thought that you know, I was taking some reference photos of him and I said, can you give me, you know, give me a, a pose or something. And I thought he would just kind of go like this, you know, he just, just put his hands out and give me a pose, but it was beautiful. He did the, all this, the, 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 the motions to get it at, at where they had to end up. Uh -huh. I was like, Holy cow. I mean, you know, it was, yeah, it was well, Jet Li was a champion, you know. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. He, I remember he threw he showed me this thing and he threw this punch at me and he just kind of stopped right at my Adam's apple, but I felt it. I mean, I could feel it, didn't touch it, but there's this energy. And man, he was fast. Yeah, it was, it was fast, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've never, he's one of the folks that, you know, I have yet to meet. I've met some of his classmates. Really? You Nowhere, know, because he was, um, you know, he was part of a wushu was his his primary martial oh. art right so wushu is like the competitive version of kung fu right so you can imagine like a gymnastics routine but with a sword yeah so perfect perfect for the movies right because it's all the yeah. high flying yeah. action and it's all the, the the fast movements so he was a champion and he his whole team was like an icon they were like the beatles of wushu right they were like the the yeah. best of the best for that time and so he made it to the movies. Some of his classmates also made it to the movies. And, you know, like they would fight together. They'd be like the unnamed villain or the other monk friend, you know. Yeah. But then some of them stayed teaching. Some of them stayed training. And so they would come through the studios because they weren't really seeking the acting thing. They were just, you know, passing yeah. through to teach and once again, being positioned in San Francisco, they just come by and we could take shots. So he told me that he, at one point, he was going to give it up, the movie stuff, mm -hmm. at the very beginning, and that he was going to um, actually go into a monastery. And mm -hmm. uh, he went to the monastery and he talked to the, the head monk, and the head monk said, You're not ready yet. Go home. You're going to get a call. And he went home, and I don't remember how many days it was, but he gets a call, and it was Joel Silver. And he called him in to be in, uh, I don't know if it was the, the Lethal Weapon movie he did first. Oh, yeah. I that, but, that was, but that was because, and I told her, so that was because of the Wachowskis, because they had tried to get him into the first Matrix, and Warner Brothers was like, no, nah, the only guy that knows Kung Fu and ho ho can do Kung Fu is Steven Seagal. Oh, <laughs> like man man and then suddenly i don't know and then they kept showing joel silver this stuff and, and silver you know he, he's got a pretty good nose for things and so he you know he called me and it's you know and i told him i said have you ever seen the wachowskis you kind of owe him a little thank you because they you know because they wouldn't talk to him they were, yeah, they were just like eh. 
Steven Seagal, he's our guy. Well, you know, we had that one of my coworkers had the opportunity to um, interview Steven Seagal, but this was during his uh, jazz musician phase. Ooh, so yeah. all he wanted to talk was about jazz music. So couldn't really spin that for Kung Fu Magazine. But. I lived in I lived in Los Angeles, and uh, I don't I don't know what whatever his first movie was. I don't know if it was Above the Law or mm -hmm. whatever one it was. But they gave out posters that night, and it was at the Chinese theater. So I went, and, you know, they got, I got my free poster, and I'm sitting in there, and you know, I got the poster, and I was gonna kind of a crack up, and I, and there's this thing where I, I'll take like, and I, I took the poster, and I cut the mouth part out of the poster on, on on his face, and I put my own lips onto it, and I started doing, oh, my name is Steven Seagal, and blah, and I was making jokes, and people were laughing. And the kids started doing it, and another kid, and they're all laughing. And then somebody got to tap me on the shoulder. I kind of turned. I looked at about three rolls behind me was Steven Seagal. Oh man! Looking daggers at me, and people told me there. I said, "You're lucky he didn't, you know, let you have it." Because black belt in Aikido. You guys think you're above the law? Very good sense of humor about himself. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, people talk about chi poisoning in the martial arts, and there's like. You know, the importance of being humble, which I think is something that Shaolin Cowboy is capturing with the way you write him, right? Like he's the hero that doesn't want to fight, but he's a badass anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and so, so once again, it's like what we were mentioning about these things that seem fictional, but there's kind of a real corollary, right? So there are these people who just get so pumped up on what they can achieve that it, it goes to their head, you know? Jet Li, he never, I never got that, you know, he was never. Exactly. Was Right. Or, or, or Wu Ping. I mean, he was aware of what he could do, but he was those guys. I mean, all the Colin Cho, those guys are all, you know, the whole keep. I mean, they had Corey Yoon and they had the whole Yoon action team there. I mean, it was watching those guys on those pulleys yanking people up into the air. Wow. Well, I mean, those things must have had an influence and like you just, you know. You're an artist, visual person, right? So you're absorbing this stuff and that's kind of coming through in your choreography and like your choices of of scenes and like you're seeing them do moves. So I would imagine yeah. you're picking some of that up. And, and, and Wu Ping is one of my favorite directors because I mean, he, especially his early movies, he had such a sense of fun and he would do such crazy stuff mm. that whenever he was taking it pretty seriously, you know, he had like the Miracle Fighters or... Uh, Especially Taoist drunkard. I think that's his brother that's in it that plays the the, the drunkard. That uh, I don't yeah, know. but that Buddha mobile that he's riding around in that thing there. And he's sort of a weird vampire thing in there, but just crazy stuff that made a sense of fun to it. And his stuff influenced me a lot. Him yeah. and Mark well, and you know I like Lau Car Lau Car Lau Car Lai. I think. Yeah, Lo Carly. Yeah, his films were just, like, you know, wow. You can see how like that that stuff had like you know Yen Wu Ping influenced uh, Jackie Chan. Yeah. yeah, and then like Jackie Chan took that and just ramped it up to become a brand onto itself, right? Look at um, Shang Chi, which just came out, and how much that yeah. owes to these this yeah. lineage, you know. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? You think it's gotten a little oversaturated or? Well, not my, myself, I, I don't think so. I mean, uh, one of my favorite films that I've seen recently, though, is uh, uh, The Night Comes for Us. Man, there's some stuff in that film. It's like, even I like, I, you know, and, I, and, I, and I've talked to him and I go, there are times when even I was like, my wife couldn't watch it. She just, she had to leave because it's so, but he has fun with what he does. I like his films, young guy. And but I like the raid, you know, I, Eco mm -hmm. was in the raid. And I, right. I, I thought that was amazing film. For, yeah. Another like setting, you know, moving things yeah. forward in terms of what could yeah. be done, you know, especially without CGI, right? Like, yeah. As yeah. A, a, putting the sweat in you know and he got a netflix series right the yeah yeah you know yeah. and he was he was one of the masters in snake eyes i was just watching that the other night so it's oh, yeah he's in that yeah yeah very nice very um, once again unassuming and mm -hmm. 
Well, it's like, I mean, it's one of those things we talk about is like the, the concept of like eating bitter before you can eat sweet, right? And like these, these, these guys have suffered so much for their art. Yeah. They're a little more humble. Well, I, that's why I always look, uh, my first introduction to that was, was through Samurai films. And especially, the, you know, I read the novel Musashi, 